God's presence is here. <laughs> I say God's presence is here. You know, there are, uh, there are, there are a lot of, of good churches here in town. But I'm thankful that I'm in this one. Amen. Y'all were kind of low on that. I said, there's a lot of good churches here in town. I said, but I'm thankful to be in this one. Because to see just just what's going on, I, I don't even know. I mean, I know we call it Youthquake, and, you know, this is, I mean, technically we call this our youth service, but, man, I just, God is just, he is just, man, awesome, awesome. So, uh, I, mm, I don't even know, but this is just, I'm telling you, I, 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 God is doing such awesome things. Um, just moving, his presence has just been so wonderful, amen, and I'm, I'm just so thankful for God's presence, and, uh, you know, as, as I was saying, though, that there are a lot of good churches, but not a lot of churches press into the things of God to press into his presence, so I just, I'm so thankful for, for Jared and Victoria, how they, how they just really press in, and amen, and Pastor Josh, I mean, just, ugh. Hallelujah! I'm just if you if you're in other churches, you'll learn that not every church will try and press into the presence of God. So you know what? That's why I'm just I, I love absolutely love the praise and worship here, uh, among other things. But I I'm just Amen. So um, Amen, Father. I just thank you here tonight. I thank you, God, for every every person who has walked through the doors here tonight, God. Father, I just pray that, uh, Lord, that they will not hear just me speak, but God, I pray that they will hear you speak tonight, God. Father, I pray that tonight that I will decrease, and God, that you will increase. Lord, I just pray that you just continue to move, Lord God, through the word. God, I just pray that you anoint your word, Father God. I pray you use me tonight for your glory, God. I pray that every person that walked through the doors tonight, God, that they will receive that, God, that they will hear from what you have to say tonight and not just what Troy has to say tonight, God. I thank you so much, Lord, for, for who you are, for your presence that is just so evident. And I just thank you, God, for being with us, God. I want to thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that just, just moves so freely. Oh, I thank you, God, tonight. I give you all praise. I give you all glory. In Jesus' name, and we all said together, amen. Well, tonight I'm actually going to be talking about uh, the corporate anointing. Amen. Uh, <laughs> amazing, huh? Um, you know, the Lord just just dropped this. I, and whenever Pastor asked me if I would speak, and I said, "Yeah." Yet he talked to me. Uh, I think it was just over a week ago or so. And uh, I was actually supposed to be in Indiana, and uh, it didn't work out. But uh, that's okay. Amen. So uh, I'm just, I'm thankful to be here, and I'm just thankful to minister whenever uh, opportunity rises up. But the Lord told me uh, last week he wanted me to speak on the corporate anointing. And uh, I, some of y'all have read my Facebook. I said, man, this message just came together like peanut butter and jelly because that's what happened. It just, there, it flowed so easily. Uh, just, man, I just, it was like God was just, whew. I mean, it was, it was so awesome how this just came together just so fast, so quick, and uh, so I'm just, I'm thankful for that. But something the Lord wanted me to read tonight, uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin, who's passed away, uh, wrote a book called Understanding the Anointing, and the Lord wanted me to read this to you tonight because he's talking about the anointing here, and I just, I just want to read this really quickly, and then I'll get into uh, tonight's word. He says, uh, and this is a, pro a prophetic word that he gave. He said, we're moving up now into the things of God. And I hear, I heard the Spirit say, there will come further revelation along these lines. He's talking about the anointing. But it has come, it has come line upon line, precept upon precept. And as it comes, men and women will flow in the Spirit. And there will be such a manifestation of my power and my glory and my spirit and my anointing in these days, in this decade in which you live, that it will startle men. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Now many who are on the fringes of these move of God will draw back and say, ah, that's fanaticism. No, we can't go with that. We believe in doing things in a nice, sedate manner. It says, never, never, never will resentment toward others uh, who may criticize you or who may speak against you never allow uh, the, the least bit of resentment or ill will or bad feelings, but walk, but walk on. Walk in love, walk in power, walk in the spirit, walk with the Lord, and he will come upon you and manifest himself manifest himself uh, uh, unto thee. And it will even be written that in the Holy Scriptures that his coming unto us shall be as the rain. And so the Holy Ghost will fall and the power of God will be in manifestation and great shall be the reward thereof. And many shall be blessed and great and good days stand just ahead. Walk on, yea, ye shall walk and for the glory of the Lord shall appear upon you. But most will move with the Spirit, and will, and all will acknowledge there are miracles happening over there. Hallelujah. I, and I guess God will just see fit to have mercy on them. But no, they saw fit to flow with God. I believe that's where we're at. Amen. We're just flowing with the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, and they saw fit to go with God, for he is at work in the earth tonight. And he indwells in his body, which is the church, which is the house of God. And his glory will fill the temple. Many will say, I just don't go along with these things. We have a pretty good church here. God has put his approval on us. But yea, says the Lord of hosts, I have put my approval upon that which lives upon the word. Get into, your, get into the word and get into, let the spirit upon the word, uh, sorry, let the spirit open the word to you. Amen. Not only upon your mind, but in the revelation in your spirit. And your spirit will be more alive unto the things of God. And he, through your spirit, will be able to teach you and admonish you and direct you. Man, I tell you what. That is powerful. That is powerful. And I tell you, if there is one, one minister that I believe. Now, you know, there are many people that will say this or that about him and that's fine. Uh, but the man knew about the Spirit of God. He knew the Lord. It, it was just so evident in his walk with God that uh, he just knew the Lord. Amen. And uh, so praise the Lord for that and that word. Amen. So uh, I just want to go on tonight. I want to talk about uh, the corporate anointing. Amen. Uh, you know, there are some people, many people, even in the church today, that might that 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 look upon the when we talk about the anointing and many people when you when you say things about the anointing and you talk about the anointing uh, even teenagers right now I mean uh, I, I want you to note teenagers that uh, this this applies to everybody uh, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are the, the anointing must be talked about let me say it again I said it doesn't matter how young or how old you are the anointing must be talked about. We need to know about the anointing. We need to know about it. So tonight, I really just kind of want to dig in. I want to talk about even what the anointing is because some people, they may not even know what the anointing is. We, we've heard it. Uh, you know, this is a Pentecostal charismatic church. Amen. But some people, they hear about it, but they really don't even know what it is. So tonight, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about us uh, as we come together. We, I want to talk also about um, different, different aspects and why we meet together, what the corporate anointing uh, is all about. So praise the Lord. So first thing I want to talk about, what is the anointing? What does it mean? And some of us, have, again, have been in church for years but have no idea what the anointing is. So really, if you, if you talk about anoint or anointing, typically in the Old Testament, it means to rub or smear with oil. That's what happens when they, the anointing, they talked about the anointing. Uh, predominantly, you'll see in Scripture, what they talk about in the Old Testament is whenever they rub you down with oil or smear oil on you, okay? And in the New Testament, it means an endowment of the Holy Spirit, 
That's kind of the difference. Now, again, that's not the meaning for ever. I mean, you'll, you'll, there's different words in the Greek, and in, I don't, I don't want to break that all down, but there's different words in the Greek and Hebrew, but for the most part, that's whenever you break down the anointing or anoint, that's what that means. Amen. And here is a fact. The anointing is very much dependent upon believers. Did you know that? That the anointing is really dependent upon us. Now, now see, I know some people are rising up already. They're like, wait a second, wait a second. No, 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 it's God. But no, you see, the, the, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And he will be where he is. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit. We, every single believer, we, we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because we're born again, we have the Holy Spirit. But, amen, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And whenever we come into a place, amen, and we're all here and we're all focused and we're all flowing with God, and we're, we see a great anointing. We see God move. We see the power of God flowing. Why? Because the church is flowing in the same direction. Amen? Amen. We're in this place. Even talk about tonight. As the worship was going, what happened is that we were all flowing in this same direction. We wasn't flowing upstream. We were flowing downstream. Amen? Amen? And we were all together. We were like a school of fish, all just flowing together. And that, church, is whenever you see such an awesome power of God, is whenever you get a church that's going to start flowing in the Holy Ghost. When you talk about the praise and you talk about the worship, which I'm going to get more into that later, but as we do that, as we come together, we will see that great anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But we have to be participators. We have to participate for there to be a great anointing. Whew, hallelujah. I'm telling you what, you can't be a spectator when it comes to the anointing. We have to be participators. We have to get in. We have to enter in. Why is it sometimes... That you will have an awesome service. And you will have people that will say, oh my gosh, that was one of the greatest services I've ever been in my life. And then you'll ask someone else and say, yeah, it was a good service. Amen. Were you a participator or were you a spectator? Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be a participator. If God is moving, I want to be there right there with him. Amen? Hallelujah. If you would, please turn with me in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. It's actually going to be on the screen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Who has their word tonight? Amen. 1 John chapter 2, 27. It says, as for you. The anointing, now pay attention here, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it is taught to you, remain in him. The anointing, as we're talking about the power of God and the anointing and the Holy Spirit, the Lord will teach you things that you will never get out of a book. I'm telling you. I am telling you right now. The anointing, the Holy Spirit can be, is your teacher. Even the word declares that in the Gospels. That he is a teacher. But the thing is, is we have to get close to him. Even though, yes, he abides in us. Amen. He is in us. As we read the word of God, he's going to teach us things and quicken us and show us things that we will never read out of an ordinary book. But the thing is, church, is that we have to get close enough to know when he's teaching, to know when he's talking, to know whenever he's directing, 
to know whenever he's guiding. We have to listen. That may mean that we have to turn off the television for a little bit. Oops, I'm meddling. Wow, that one went, went over like a lead balloon, didn't it? Amen. But I'm telling you, there is a price. Whenever we're talking about wanting to hear from the Lord, hear the Lord's voice, there is a price to pay for that. I've said it before, you can have as much or as, as little of God as you want to. It is absolutely 100% dependent upon you. The Lord will never force himself upon you. He will never make you serve him. It is your choice. Amen? But you are anointed. Do you know that? Come on, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you are anointed. Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are anointed. The word says that we are anointed. Now, there are some people who have a greater anointing, but we're still anointed. Mm. The Holy Spirit will teach you things, again, that you cannot get from a book. Amen. The Holy Spirit will teach you things about destiny, about everyday life, about why you must continue to have. And then this is the reason why we have to have a strong walk with God and that we can stay in line with his perfect will. We have to listen. We have to flow. We have to hear. As he's teaching us, we have to, we have to learn. Are you all here tonight? Isaiah 10, 27 hmm, says, In that day, the burden will be lifted from your shoulders, their yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be broken or destroyed because of the anointing. Now, in this scripture here, we're not talking about oil, but we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the power of God to lift a yoke off of a thing or off of you. Amen? <clears throat> mm. So why, church, do we come together? Why? Why did we come tonight? You know what? I bet you if I if I set if I if I stood down here and if I grabbed 15 people and I said, why did you come to church tonight? I would imagine that I would get at least five different answers. Why did we show up tonight? Some may say, I came because I wanted to hear the praise and worship. Some may say, well, this is Wednesday, and I've been here every Wednesday for a long time, and this is why I come. <clears throat> Amen. There's different reasons why people show up to church. It's just the way it is. Amen. But why did we come here tonight? You know, I've heard people say for years that they don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Now, let me just say something about that. Honestly and technically, they are correct. But I want to say this, though. But here's what I want to say. If I would examine the life of somebody who doesn't go to church and doesn't get involved in even getting involved in a church and stuff like that versus someone who comes to a church and gets involved and, and does things, I would, I would almost bank on it that the person who's going to church, getting it fed every single week through God's word, they're going to have a more fruitful life. Amen. I just, I, I've, it's, it is so hard for people who do not get involved in the things of God to have a strong relationship with the Lord. Just saying. I'm just saying. Amen. Now, there are exceptions to the rule about this. Amen. But let me say something. God instituted the local church. 
He did that for a reason. Because there, actually there are many reasons why he did this. Amen. He wanted us to come together uh, for fellowship. He wanted us to come together to be strengthened. Amen. There's many different reasons why he has called uh, the local church to come into to what it is. The first reason is strength. Everybody say strength. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We are here to help one another. We are here to sharpen one another. You know what? I get strength from my brother over here if he prays, and my brother here who prayed for me tonight. I get strength from that. Pastors talked about, said, you know, talked to us, and he said, I like you guys being there. He said, I get strength from that. Amen. When we're praying for each other and we're doing things for each other, what are we doing? We're sharpening iron. And church, we have to be here for one another. We have to be here for each other. We have to be here to help each other up, not tear down. Amen. Because you know what? There, there's, there's enough of that uh, in everyday life. Think about it. Amen. Think about your job. Think about school. Think about the trials and tests in life. Lord knows there is enough like tearing down and trying to destroy. We have to be here. Amen. Jesus is, 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 is about life. He wants to breathe life into dead things. Fellowship. Another reason why, why we have the local church. If you would please turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. Praise you, Jesus. Acts chapter 2. Y'all doing all right tonight? All right, I'm just making sure. Oh, Lord. Acts chapter 2. Did I put? Okay, all right. No, we got it right. Acts chapter 2, verses 46. It says, every day, everybody say every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Fellowship. We have to have fellowship. Amen. Amen. Lord, I, I know we have our, our times of fellowship in the back. Woo! We have fellowship. Amen. And that's what we need. We got to have fellowship with one another. Amen. Right? Yes. Hallelujah. Number three is praise and worship. Amen. Now, can you listen to praise and worship at home? Yes. Can you listen to praise and worship in your car? Yes. Can, I mean, there's different things that you can do. Yes, you can always, you can have it on your iPod, amen. You can have it on your iPad. You can have it on so many different things where you can listen to praise and worship. But there's something that happens whenever we come here together. It's called the corporate anointing. Whenever we come here together to get into the presence of God and to listen to that praise and to that worship. It's us coming together. Born-again believers, as we're filled with the Holy Spirit, there's something about that corporate praise and something about that corporate worship. Now, let me tell you, you know what? There have been great times that where, uh, you know, I got to tell myself, where I've been in my car and I've been listening to worship and I'm driving. I, don't, I can't tell you how fast, but uh, I was just in the Spirit or something like that. And I look down, oh my, oh my goodness, got to slow down, amen. There have been times like that. There's times when I'm in my house where I'm listening to praise and worship, and man, you get into it. We all have those times, amen. And you know, you're, you're in your car, or whatever the case may be, where you get to listen to praise and worship and let, that, let the presence of the Lord, amen, just, just move, amen. But there's something also about whenever we come here corporately as a people, as the body of believers. 
Psalm 47 and verse 1. Let me read this real quick. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 47 and verse 1, it says, amen. It says, clap your hands, all you nations. Or your verse may say, all you people. Shout to God with the cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord most high, the great king over all the earth. He has subdued nations under us, people under our feet. He, he chose us for his inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loved. God has ascended amid him shouts of joy. The Lord amid the soundings of trumpets. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. Tonight, as the praise and worship was going out, we were, I, I really believe wholeheartedly, we were in the flow together of hearing that praise and hearing that worship. And church, that's what we need. You know, there are times whenever, not only me, but some of the other ministers, you know, there are times whenever, and you don't always get that. Amen. So I, I, I'm telling you, it's a real blessing to know that we were flowing that way tonight. Because there are some times whenever you get up here to minister, and man, you felt like, man, there was no praise and no worship going on. And like just absolute, just wasn't in unity. Amen. That's all I'm going to say. Amen. That's why I'm saying it's dependent upon us. This is why I want to say tonight that we as a body of believers, it's important that we get here. Uh-oh. All right, I want you to tap your neighbor and say he's going to start meddling. So tell them, say, get ready. So see, whenever we get here at, at the first song on praise and worship, just saying, whenever we're here and we get involved in that, Amen. We're allowing that praise and allowing that worship, amen, to move in the presence of the Lord to move. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I love you, but you got to get here on time. All right, that's all. I'm done. I'm done meddling. I'm done meddling. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to talk about some corporate praise and worship. Amen. Corporate praise and worship brings... God's power whenever we get involved. How many have been in a service or in a different church and you've heard praise and worship and it's been good, but everybody's like this. And you really got to wonder if God is, is really in that place. Amen. We have to be involved. We have to get involved. Amen. Because so many people, I mean, so many churches, just they just don't even care about God's presence. Mm. It's like, I wouldn't want to go to a church where God's presence wasn't there. Because Lord knows I've been in that. I've been in services. I've been in churches where it's... it's Dead. Dead. Dead as a doornail. Amen. And can I just say here, you know what? I know that, that you know, churches, and, some, and I'm, not, I'm not here getting all involved in, in, in all megachurches. I, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is sometimes we just get in all this little patty cake praise and worship. Amen. And we just, you know, and, and we miss things of God. We miss the presence of God. Because we're more worried about agenda, and we're, we're more worried about time, and then we, we don't even worry about, we don't even get time for God to move. Because, because sometimes God's going to move outside of our 20-minute of our comfort zone sometimes. Woo! Amen! Well, we can do two fast songs, and we can do a song that's going to transition and then a, a, a slow song, and then I have to get up, and I, you know, we have to get up and preach at this time, and I got to be done by this time, and da 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 da. Can I just say something? Who walked through those back doors tonight? I, I believe all you did. Amen. There are two doors back there, and I just want to say, and I, I say this in love, 
This isn't my pastor saying this to me. Uh, this is no one telling me this. But there are two doors back there for a reason. You can enter and you can leave at any point in time. I'm just saying. Don't feel like, you know, oh my gosh, they're going to sing another song. You know what? If you got to go, you got to go. Man, y'all are so quiet tonight. I'm not even meddling that bad. Come on now. Amen. But serious, we've got to figure out what we want. What do we want? Do we want God's presence or don't we? Is God going to work outside of your you being at a restaurant at a certain time? If you've got problems, there is the back door. Go. All right, let me, let me, I'm just, I'm going to, before I get myself in more trouble, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the word one more time. Amen. I got a couple more scriptures for you. Amen. And we're going to, uh, we're just going to worship some more. There's the back door if you didn't, if you don't want to. Uh, amen. But 2 Chronicles chapter 5, we're going to see the power of God in operation whenever unity comes. Everybody say unity. unity. Say it like you mean it. Unity. unity. Amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 5 verse 11. Thank you, Lord. And it says here, the priest then withdrew from the holy place. All the priests, hallelujah, there had consecrated themselves, regardless of their divisions. Okay, I'm going to keep on. All the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, Haman, Jeduthun, and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen and playing cymbals and lyres. Hallelujah. They were accompanied by 120 priests surrounding or sounding trumpets. The trumpeters and singers joined in unison. That means they were together. They were playing together as one, as with one voice, to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices in praise to the Lord, and he sang, He is good. His love endures forever. Hallelujah. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Glory to God. Mm. And the priests could not perform their services because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled, hallelujah, the temple of God. Mm. They were as one, playing together as one. If we the body of Christ would learn how to be as one, I'm telling you what, we would not have so much division and all this mess that's going on in the body of Christ today. Man, you got 500 million types of denominations and, and different sects and different denominations, and we got all these things going on. All this division, all this man-made rules, and all this mess going on today. My Lord, we got Baptists talking about Pentecostals, Pentecostals talking about, I mean, just all this mess. My Lord, if we would just get unified as the body of Christ, whew, mountains can move. You want to talk about a country that would change if we could just get the church to agree on something. All right, Acts chapter 2. This is going to be my last scripture. That was corporate praise and worship. This is going to be corporate prayer. Everybody say corporate prayer. Hallelujah. Now Jesus sent them, amen, praise God. He sent them to go pray and to seek him. So this is what they were doing. This is leading up and on the day of Pentecost. And it says, and we all can probably quote this backwards and forwards and sideways. And it says, when the day, of the day of Pentecost come, they were all together in one place. Everybody say one place. Hallelujah. Suddenly a sound, hallelujah, like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And hallelujah. They saw what seemed to be tongues as fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them or gave them the utterance, your version may say. 
They were praying and seeking God corporately. And the Lord showed up. That was the promise. But notice they had to be as one. They had to come together in unison. Lord, help us. Lord, help us with our divisions. Lord, help us with being divided. Last thing I want to say before we get to listen to some a little bit more worship. Sometimes there are some of you who are sitting down tonight, and sometimes you feel like, why do I even come to church? I mean, is, does, does anyone really miss me if I'm not even here? I want to say here tonight that you are not insignificant, but you are a part of the body of Christ. And we need you here. We want you here. You're part. You've got gifts. You've got talents. You've got things that God has anointed you for and with. Amen. For use. Amen. For use of the local church here. Amen. God anointed you and placed you. You have to use those things that God has anointed you with for the kingdom. For the local church. To be a part of it. This is what we call the ministry of helps. Amen. And we all play a part here. And I just want to encourage you not to feel insignificant. Because that is the enemy's tactic and that is his trick. Oh, you don't have to go there tonight. You don't even play a role anyway. No one even cares if you show up. That's the enemy. But what God says is it's important for you to be here. Because we need to be strengthened. We need to have fellowship. Amen. We need to get into this corporate praise and worship. We need to be a part of what God is doing. I want you to stand to your feet tonight. And I, I want to say one, one just very quick thing. That as we, as we get back into this worship song, if, even if you do have to go, please just... Go quietly, amen. We, I don't want to hear people like slamming stuff and, you know, I mean, just, just, amen. Just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit on that, amen. Father, we just, uh, we come to you, God, in, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing, God. I thank you again for every single person who walked through the doors tonight. Father, I pray that we do not ever feel insignificant. But God, for those who are trying to figure out what they're called to do, for those who are struggling with trying to figure things out, God, I just pray that you speak to their heart. I pray, God, that you help them. I pray, God, that you guide them. I pray, God, that you show them the way. Father, as we go forward in your presence, as we go forward as the local church, God, I pray that you just help us.